Now we're talking about the day when they had those, those boxes that sat on the floor with a green, red, and blue um, pro one, well, projector. But each one of those colors was like this, and you had to get the crosses on the screen to line up to get it in the right color. And, and the guy running that whole network um, would wear a tie on one seminar, and they had some great people in the seminars. They'd have Kenneth Copeland one, one month and John Osteen the next month. And, you know, I mean, they had, had a bunch of big guys on there doing, the, doing seminars with them. But he, he would wear a tie, and everybody had that tie on the next month. Power tie of the month. Because if he has it, it's the power tie. Power. Your tie ain't got nothing to do with it. Okay? So we get foolish. And so Jesus made it so that the simple can do it. Remember this. The interest of thy word giveth light. It giveth understanding to the simple. So you don't have to have a Ph.D., in theology, in ancient historical biblical languages to use faith. Okay? You don't have to look at the picture graph on the stained glass windows and try to figure out the Bible story where they preach your sermon in Latin. Okay? All right? You, Jesus said, whosoever. And as we, as we said in years past, if you're a whosoever, raise your hand. You're a whosoever. So we make everybody do it. Every time I say whosoever, you had to raise your hand. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. So every time, everybody, every time I say whosoever, raise your hand. Come on, Jerry. Get it up there. Okay. Now say this. Get it up. I didn't tell you to put it down. Whosoever means me. Whosoever means me. Okay, now you can put it down. Now there's an old church hymn that says, Whosoever surely meaneth me. Y'all remember that song? It's, it's an old hymn. It's an old hymn. Whosoever surely meaneth me. And I'm not even going to attempt to sing it because I don't remember the, um, I can't get the tune in my head to do it. And if I start out, I'll blow it. Okay? But it's an old, it's an old hymn that says, Whosoever meaneth me. Well, thank God, whosoever meaneth me. Say that, whosoever, whosoever meaneth me. Mean. All right. Whosoever shall say, not think, not hope, not wish, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. And shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that the things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. For verily I say unto you that, I mean, I'm sorry. Um, therefore, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire when ye pray. Now, remember, oh, let me go ahead and finish this. When ye pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Now, John, I mean, uh, James 4, 6 says you have not because you ask not. The Greek word ask in James 4, 6 is the same Greek word in Mark eleven twenty four that says pray. A T O A I T E O. Okay? So when Jesus said, um, therefore I say unto you, what sort of things you desire when you pray, he said in the Greek, when you ask. Now, the reason I do that, because sometimes when we hear the word pray, we so spiritualize it, we don't get the concept of what we're talking about. You know, we get into the, oh God, kind of mindset. Not always, but I said we do. It's, it's, it's a habit that, you know, and so I just want you to understand in the Greek, what Jesus said was that whatever you desire when you ask for it, you don't need to pray about it in the sense of can I, can I, you ask for it. Because number one, the believer who loves God and sold out to the Lord is not going to ask things against his word. And if you are, you need to get a checkup from the neck up. A to the men. Isn't that right? Okay. And so, what you know, so here we have it. That whosoever ask, 
believes in the heart, and they get whatsoever. Now, that's a general statement. Very general. You know, um, Dad Hagen had a little mini book called You Can Have What You Say. Okay? And we understand that's within the parameters of God's Word. You can't have somebody else's wife. That's not a biblical confession. That's not a biblical desire. It violates his word. When you say you can have what you say, you can have what you say that is in accordance with and in line with his written word and will. Okay? And anything his word says you can have, you can have. All right. Now, as a church, we want to have what we say. So we want to be believing God for things here to grow, for manifestations of the Spirit, amen, for us reaching people, for people being drawn to this place. We're, we're wanting to speak those things and be on the same page with that. Why? Because what things do we desire? So our desire needs to shift from the, as far as long, uh, this teaching along this lines as teaching, for, for so long, every time you taught on something like this, you can have what you say, and da 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 People start thinking about what car they wanted, what house they wanted, and there's nothing wrong with that, okay? We've tried, we've tried to temper this without getting people into, you know, into condemnation about believing God for, you know, a, a, a good car or a new car or, you know, a new house or whatever. But we also need to move over and begin to think globally and think kingdom, as much or more than we do person, personal, advancing the kingdom, building the kingdom, amen, reaching lost people for the kingdom. So we have to become kingdom-minded. There's nothing wrong. Listen, and, and don't, don't take and just go jump back in the other ditch where we got out of, you know, Lord Keep them humble, we'll keep them poor. You know, uh, live on barely get along street right next to Grumble Alley. We, we don't want to go, go do that. But we do need to swing back out of the, it's all about me. You know, the, what's that song we sing? It's all about you, Lord, Jesus. Some people, folks are sitting there going, it's all about me. I had a word for 23. It's all about me in 23. It was a, it was a fake word. It was a pseudo word. Okay. I'm going to get more in 24. I'm really going to jive in 25. <laughs> okay. We can go on with that all day. All right. <clears throat> I don't mind people rhyming stuff, but, you know, we have to be careful not to try to force something and then put, yea, thus saith the Lord on it. It's all right to say, look, you know, taking the land this year or something, having a slogan that we can all agree with. That's fine. But don't, don't force something just so you can make it rhyme with the year. Now, if the Holy Ghost does it and it's really the Spirit of God, fine. Okay? All right. Hallelujah. But, you know, uh, sometimes, you know, people going out there. Now, now let me say this. Can I, I'm going to take a little bitty short side journey over here. There are things God speaks to local churches that's for that local church. It is not a body of Christ word. It was for that church at that time. Okay? You understand? So God may speak something about Faith and Victory Church, but you can't go take and apply to, or not Faith and Victory Church. Well, it could have been for Faith and Victory Church in the past. Now Expedition Church. I just did that. I can't believe I did that. That's because I still put sending our checks out, out of the bill pay service with faith and victory on them, and I'm not happy. I changed the name six months ago with them, and they're still doing it. I'm trying to get that straightened out. Anyway, there may be something God speaks to us, for us specifically, that we can't go, some other church can't grab and go take and apply. Well, God's not a respected person. That's right. He'll speak to your church. There are some things that are generalized for the body of Christ. There are some things that are very specific. And you can't try to run off with something that's very specific for somebody else under the guise God's not a respecter of persons. 
Okay? Paul taught Timothy, fight a good warfare with the prophecies that went before thee. Paul can't fight his warfare with Timothy's prophecies. All right? And I remember the story Dad Hagen used to tell about the guy with the oil wells. We told this before. I'll tell it again. You know, Lord, they were in the service. The Spirit of God spoke to this oil guy. He was, not, he was, he was struggling because things weren't happening right. And said, go drill here and drill it. And, and when you do, deal it, do it at a 45-degree angle. Well, you don't drill. That's not how you do it. But he went out to his, his head rigger, said, look, we want to drill right over here, and we're going to drill at a 45-degree angle. And the guy goes and gets all the geologicals out, opens them up, says, look, there's nothing here. He said, I'm boss. I'm paying you. You do what I said. They struck oil. And they went through this scenario about four or five times of him saying to go drill here and go drill here and go drill here, and they struck oil every time. The guy's fighting him all the step away. Finally, he threw the things out and said, where do you want to join next? And they were hitting oil everywhere. Now, this guy gives his testimony. And some, it may have been in the full gospel businessmen's meeting or something like that. And another oil guy's there. And he hears that. So he goes out to his guy and starts telling him, he went bankrupt. Well, the Lord, I don't know why the Lord wanted to put him out. No, 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 no. Had nothing to do with that. He was trying to take a word specific to this guy. And he missed the whole point. I said he missed the whole point. Because the point is not the method. If the point is how he got it, how he got to that method, how he got to hear God. Amen? See, by praying and seeking the Lord, the Lord spoke and gave him that specific direction. The other guy could have prayed and sought the Lord, and God spoke to him about what he was to do. But he tried to take the easy way and get somebody else revelation without the work and walk in his revelation that was specifically for him. There's no scripture that says thou shalt drill here with a 45 degree angle. But it does say they that are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. Doesn't it? And so we have to be led by the Spirit. And so God may speak something to a church down the road or somewhere else and glory hallelujah for them i can't go to their next church building seminar and then tell me how their what their word was and me run home and try to use it we have to hear from heaven and as we hear from heaven <coughs> then we fight a good warfare with those things we speak those things what the lord has told us you might turn on the tv and brother copeland may be preaching and he may have a prophecy and say this and say you know, and he may say some things about uh, Kenneth Copeland Ministries. I, as the pastor of my church, can't take his word for his ministry and apply it to Faith and Victory Church. I can take the principles yes, yes. of getting in prayer, seeking the Lord, hearing from heaven, and then giving the direction by the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. You see, that's what you follow, not the method. You've got people who built their churches with bus ministries. And everybody in the world wants to follow him. People, you know, wanted to follow Paul Young Yi Cho. Nobody worked for him. No, did not work for anybody on the planet anywhere near the scope of Paul Young Yi Cho. It didn't happen. Nobody. Cell groups. You do that in America, and you'll have 45 churches out of one. Not 45 cell groups. You have 45 churches with 45 new pastors. Because that's how we do it here. My ministry, oh, you, we love you, Brother Jerry. You're better than Pastor Ed. And that's what they'll tell them. Brother, if you leave, I'll go with you. Somebody in the church told another person that one time. Yeah. You're going to start a church? If you do, I'll go with you. Yeah. <clears throat> well, Paul Young, you can't copy that. There's a lot of things involved in that, including culture, the cultural mindset. Um, the Asians, particularly, uh, you know, some, some certain regions of the world, are, are much more bent on following than they are leading. Americans, on the other hand, all won't be in charge. I mean, why do you think we say too many chiefs and not enough engines? Right. Well, I was racist. My wife's Cherokee. <laughs> She's the chief. I'm the engine. <laughs> and don't, if you don't like that, just turn us off and don't send me no letter. All right? People get too offended over too little stuff. So 
we as a church are going into this, this year. Now, remember we said Sunday that the calendar year doesn't really change anything, but people get an excitement and a hope about the possibility and the feasibility of change. So we want to take, we want to take advantage. Because you know how long that lasts? Till February the 1st. <laughs> Go get in the gym. Go to eat right. You know, February 1st, break out the chocolate cake. <laughs> I ain't going nowhere. You know, went to the gym three times. I can't walk for four days. I ain't going back. Okay. But we want to take advantage of that by, by setting expectations out there about Expedition Church that we're, go that we're going to do, we're going to accomplish in this coming year. Okay, um, you know, we are primed to grow. We are situated with a core group of people, amen, that are faithful, that are loyal, that love the church, love the ministry, love us. I don't have anybody here trying to start their own church or wanting to start their own church, or sending emails about starting their own thing, and leaving and all that stuff that I know of. If you are, God will, shut, God will tell off on you. <laughs> Just so you'll know. He does stuff like that, you know. Yeah. Beware lest your sins find you out. Okay? So, we're going to come together. We're going to speak faith. Okay? Um, 2 Corinthians 4.13 says, We have in the same spirit of faith according as it is written. I believed and therefore have I spoken. In other words, in the Old Testament Scripture says, I believe therefore have I spoken. Paul now makes it, calls it the spirit of faith and says this, We also believe and therefore speak. So let me ask you, do you believe that this is a year of growth for us? of expansion, of people coming in, of manifestations of the Spirit, of the, the anointing of God increasing? Amen? Do you, do you really believe that? Yeah. Oh, come on now. Do you believe it? Yeah. You got to speak it. Yeah. You got to have an end. You can't come to church like, oh, here we go again. I mean, I feel like singing the hee-haw song with the drive up in the parking lot. Gloom, despair, and agony on me. Deep, dark depression, excessive misery. If it weren't bad luck, I'd have no luck at all. Gloom, despair, and agony on me. And then she met another and, pfft, and she was gone. See, you can't come to church eeyore -ing. You cannot be an Eeyore. We have to have you as Tiggers. <laughs> it's time for church. <coughs> Amen. You bouncy, bouncy, bouncy. I mean, you're tiggers for Jesus. We might put that up outside. Tiggers for Jesus. <laughs> Amen. You're coming in bouncy, bouncy. You're speaking. There's an expectation. Yes. The demand on the anointing will cause it to flow. Yeah. You come without a demand. Listen, you can walk in that kitchen right now. There's a water faucet in there. And there ain't a bit of water running out of it unless somebody left it on. Ruin, that would ruin my whole, my whole uh, pictorial anal uh, analogy. But if you walk in there, there's nothing coming out of that spigot, which means that the well's not pumping. Why? No demand. The moment, however, you move that faucet up, the flow starts. And the more you open up, the more it will pump. Because there's more demand. When we come with an expectancy and a demand in faith that God's going to work in our midst, it will create that. It will create the atmosphere of expectancy. And in that atmosphere, the Holy Spirit will work. We are not coming to the circus and paying our 50 cent for a sideshow just to see if he'll show up and do something. 
We are the ones who make the demand. Draw nigh unto me, and I'll draw nigh unto thee, says the Lord. Amen? I mean, you got to draw, you got to draw towards him, making those demands if you want him to do things. Now he's ready. He's willing. He's able. That faucet is ready, willing, and able. But until the demand is placed, it will not flow. Amen. So you guys, well, what if we don't have everybody in the building? Do it? That's okay. We get enough doing it, they'll get in on it. Amen. You get that working among you. You talk that among you. You talk that with people in the church. I mean, you know, somebody says, how are you doing this? But glory to God, we're going to have us a service today. Yes, yes. yes Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. I don't know what you have need of today, brother. I don't have, know what I have need of today, sister. But I can tell you God's here to meet that need. And I'm telling you, I've got an expectancy for him to work in our midst. Right. And they might go, oh, 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 well, you're right. Or they might say, well, I sure hope so. That's okay. Keep doing it. Why? Because eventually they're going to get out of that hope so and get over and get the moving into one of an expectancy. So especially when they start seeing four, five, six people, all of a sudden they're getting ministered to. Amen? So the confession precedes your possession, but you've got to believe your words. The same spirit of faith, I believe, therefore have I spoken. Okay? And, you know, Numbers <coughs> 13, Caleb stealed the people before Moses. Remember, they got into the land, came back out. Ten spies, Caleb and Joshua came out with a good report. The other tw ten came out with an evil report. God didn't even call it a negative report. He called it an evil report. And Caleb stole all the people before Moses said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men that went up with him said, We are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, the, uh, the land though through which we've gone to search it is a land that eateth up. Now listen, I thought it was a land that floweth with milk and honey. But they said it's a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. And we saw the giants, the son of Anak, which come of the giants. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. And so we were in their sight. You had 12 spies go in, 10 came back with the evil report. We got to have more people speaking faith than we have people speaking unbelief, evil report. Amen? So I challenge you, right here, this bunch, the Wednesday night crowd, hallelujah, to be so full of anticipation and excitement and faith about where we're heading, you just spit it all over everybody. Yeah. <laughs> they come walking in the door and you're just, you're, you're not, well, it's good to see you. Hope you had a good week. Well, it was all right. You know, the rheumatoid kicked up. But let's lay pans on you and pray for you. You don't have to wait for Pastor Ed. <clears throat> you don't have to wait for me. They'll enjoy the whole service a whole lot better. You get them healed on the way in than when they get up in here and have to wait for the service to end. And if there's an opportunity to pray for the sick, I mean, go ahead and lay hands on them. Yeah. Who, me? Yeah, you. Jesus said, these signs shall follow them that believe. Didn't say the signs shall follow them pastors. Said they'll follow them that believe. They shall lay hands on the sick <coughs> and they shall recover. My goodness. I said, my goodness, you'll have a friend for life. They come in and get healed. They'll always want to be around you. Amen. So let's, let's, let's take this to task. Let's take this to heart. Amen. Amen. Always be talking. Welcome to Expedition Church. Glad to see you today. Well, man, I'll tell you, God's working. God's moving. Well, I didn't see anything. Hang around. Get your expector on. Amen. 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 I'm telling you, God's at work. Yes. You got to speak it. We got to declare it into the atmosphere. Yes. We got to have everybody joining in and just doing it. 
And if we got some of them aren't there, that's okay. We're just going to cover them so much they can't do anything. We're going to wrap them up. They're going to be singing that song. I'm wrapped up, tied up, tang it all up in Jesus. I'm wrapped up. Amen. Get them full of faith. Amen. 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 Or so much so that if they, if, they, if they don't get into faith, it just shuts them up. <clears throat> so they can't talk the unbelief yeah. while we're getting faith in them. Yeah. Amen. Amen. David said, Lord, put a watch over my mouth that I might not sin against you. Yeah. What's he saying? Make me shut up. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, put the zip, zip lock on my mouth. Close it up, Lord. Yeah. That's what he did to Zacharias. Zacharias was going to blow the whole thing, so God just shut his mouth. He couldn't talk until the baby was born and gave them the right name. Amen. 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 So our words, let's, let's change it for dominate our lives. So our words dominate Expedition Church. This place is full. It's overflowing. We got to have multiple services because we can't handle the people coming. Well, I don't see any. Stop it. It's full. Amen. Well, it's, it's full to overflowing. We got to have multiple services. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Matter of fact, we got to build. Well, we can't build until we feel. Get to where we already got it full in our hearts. And start even speaking the building. Amen. But we, gotta, we, get, we have to do that. Not me. This is not a me thing. This is a we thing. This is the congregation. This is the church joining together in faith, speaking. You know, I'm going to tell you something now. You just understand this. The devil didn't run around and run away and go hide just because we got the land. He's going to want to come back and cause disruption and disharmony and discontent. And we're going to have to stop it. And the way we stop it is speak faith and not let that in. Well, that's negative. No, that's how he works. I know how he works, but I also know how to fight it. We speak faith. Where you, what? Wherefore take unto you the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. So the reason how we stop discontentment and dissatisfaction and unbelief is we get so busy talking faith out here that it's quenching all the fiery darts. Amen. Y'all with me? Y'all ready to rumble? I mean, you ready to do it in the kingdom? So you're going to show up Sunday. How are you going to show up Sunday? You're going to be, you, I mean, there ought to be so much faith when we walk in the building, people just go, ooh. We like that book, um, The Prayer Room. Is that what it's called, The Prayer Room? What was that movie? The War Room. The War Room. Thank you. <laughs> that pastor was going to buy that house, and he walked into that room. I, I just love it. He walked back out, and then he walked back in the room, <laughs> and he walked back out because he knew something was in there. He knew something was in there, and he was just making sure it wasn't just some kind of weird thing, so he kept walking in and out. How many seen that movie? Okay, well, it's, it's, it's worth seeing again. Yeah, he, he had to go back and stand there. He knew prayer had gone in there. He knew there was an atmosphere in there. Are you here? I said it, something was in there. And we, ought, we need to have it so people walk in the building, this building, marginalized, who are marginal in where they're walking with God, marginal in where they are in faith, and they know something is going on. And you guys, you guys can set that standard. So I'm asking you, will you join me in being stewards of the mysteries of God? Speaking faith over this ministry, speaking, having, having the anticipation and excitement about God working in our midst, 
demonstrations of the Spirit, manifestations of the Holy Ghost, outpourings of the Spirit, glory to God. People coming in here from the north, the south, and the east, and the west, filling this place up, multiple services, glory to God, having to build a new building, glory to God. God gave us the land. God gave us the building. It's the launching pad to grow and to do what we called us to do. When you leave, you ought to walk out going, glory, look, I can't wait to get back in here. I can't wait to get back in here. <clears throat> Why? Because God's going to speak. The Spirit's going to manifest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The anointing just abides in this place. Let's not just, the anointing's on the, no, let me, let me tell you, the anointing can abide in a place. It can abide in a place. Hallelujah. <coughs> I know when we walked in here, the, the previous pastor, bless, he went home to be with Jesus, but he was an old church of God who became charismatic. Okay? Pentec they're Pentecostal. They had become independent Pentecostal, basically. They, you know, they, you had the, those roots. They were, they get, those roots get in you, they just in there. Mm -hmm. You could tell something was here. We didn't know all that. Just, that's what y'all, y'all just came, this, is, this feels like home. Yeah. There was an abiding presence. Mm -hmm. And nobody could buy the building. People tried and they couldn't. Four different groups that year before we got in here to see it, wanted to buy the building and it, 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 it just couldn't. Because he had left it wanting a church in here. And when she found out we were charismatic Pentecostals, you know, she was thrilled. Because we're taken up. Because that abiding presence. So that anoint, anoint, there's, a, there's an anointing that abides. Now we are going to bring what God's given us, hallelujah, and take that to another level. And we're going to do it by our mouth and our heart. That is the word of faith which we preach, that if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. So that means at home you're going to be on the way to church. Lord Jesus, I'm telling you, we're going to have us a service today. The anointing is manifest. Now, it may be to teach. It may be to preach. It might be to worship and just get, get all lost in the spirit and worship. Whatever, we're going to have us a service. Hallelujah. In the presence of God. And God's going to work. And God's going to do in people's lives. <clears throat> and God's going to do in people's lives what we couldn't do in 10 years of counseling and therapy and everything else. Glory to God. Because this is the place where God has called for us to come and meet and for us to join together in unity. Glory to God. Behold how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. And our expectation will bring his glory. And in that glory, I said in that glory, there will be transformation of lives, transformation of bodies, transformation of direction. It's going to be the glory of God. Hallelujah. <coughs> to the point we glow with his presence. Now, if you think Moses' face could glow just by being in God's presence, he wasn't even born again. What do you think we can do as born-again believers with the Spirit within and then coming on? Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Ooh, glory to God. The glory. And when we start singing, the glory is here. Yes, the glory is here. We ain't going to be singing a song. Yeah. We're going to be talking about what's going on. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. When we start coming and start saying, Lord, anoint us with fresh oil. Your anointing upon us renew that we may cease to be weary. And I can't remember the next line. Anybody know the next line? Remember the next line? Go forth 
but our strength renewed. Man, we get people in here, and we're all of a sudden talking about the glory. We came expecting the glory, and God showed up with the glory. And I can tell you what happens. You come expecting, you come, it manifests, and the bows up. The one that didn't come expecting gets in on the overflow. I started calling my bozo. That was dead in love, of course. Because that's what we exactly what we want to happen. We want it to spill over on other people. We want it to flow over on them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's like somebody showing up, you just got done cooking a big, you know, uh, bowl of um, some kind of really good soup. And you're sitting down eating, and they go, well, grab a bowl and get some. Well, I don't want to. No, don't, don't sit. And then they, they, they're eating three. We want, them, we want them, I mean, you know, stepping up to the table and getting more. Hallelujah. So when you're on your way to church next time, hallelujah, get like some of those old saints that prayed. Lord, you don't think we're not going to have revival, do you? Got to start getting bold with God. They got into prayer and started talking to God like that. Now, Lord, you don't think we're not going to have revival, do you? Amen. And they had revival. Lord, we're going to have us a service. And Lord, it's going to be good. And people are going to get ministered to. And their lives are going to be changed. See, if you're speaking that and you're walking in with that, you're bringing that into the building with your heart, with your presence, but the abiding presence of God connects to that because you're speaking words of faith. Amen? And by releasing those words of faith, the spirit of faith is released. And God goes into operation. Hallelujah. Amen? Hope you all got something out of that. Now I just want to go see you act on it. I mean, let's run with it. Let's get it all over, all, all over like ugly on a monkey, green on grass, white on rice. After it's been polished. <laughs> Amen. All right. Let's receive our offering. Hallelujah. If you need an offering envelope. Um, <laughs> Joe, I promise you, it's a coming. Offering envelopes are coming. I'm going to get some. Every time I think about it, I'm like, I got to go get the offering envelopes. And it wasn't a, it's not a good time to go do it. Hallelujah. If you need to do it by electronically, go ahead and get that ready. Hallelujah. Amen. Father, in Jesus' name, we speak faith over the tithe and the offering. Thank you the people are blessed. Heaven's windows are open unto them, and you pour out blessings. They don't have room enough to receive in Jesus' name. And you agree with that by saying, Amen and amen. All righty. Hallelujah. I'm excited. I'm excited to see what Doc got. Listen, when we went into 2021 and got started going through that year, it, there was a, something building about something. There was just something building about something was coming. And then when we got into the building, we got, we got in here in this year, and this is, it was just such a great year of you know, settling in and doing stuff and getting the, but now, now we, we have this. And we're going to connect with what the blessing of the Lord is and use it and use our faith to reach and to do for the kingdom. In Jesus' name. I got 120 chairs more in storage. They need to have people in them right here. Well, that's mean we have to build because there ain't enough room in this building to put them in there. All right. Hallelujah. And then we're going to have to order extra ones to match. Or these will get bruised down to the children's church and youth and we have to order new chairs if they can't match them. I don't know if that material is still available. I like that material. But if they don't have it, we'll get something different. Hallelujah. All right. We love you. You can go out of here and have a great week. Yeah. You're speaking faith. Yeah. You're talking over the church. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Praise God.
We love you. God bless you. See you next time here at Expedition Church. <coughs> First John chapter 5, verse 4 says, Whatsoever. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. I can't even think of it. I just went. Whatever service is born of God overcometh the world. No. Nope. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Amen. I went totally blank. Hallelujah. Maybe I need a new scripture. I don't know. <laughs> Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. This is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Speak faith. Declare it. Walk in it and believe it. See you next time here at Expedition Church of the Triad. God bless you. We love you. See you then.